Hi everybody, welcome back to another episode of the program. Today we're going to talk about half a million year old signs of extinct human species found in a Poland cave, most specifically the Tuno Wielki uh, cave site in southern Poland. Let me pull that up here. Right smack dab, almost in the center of central Europe. Uh, this is a big deal because although there are a lot of uh, separate sites here, stretching all the way down to Italy as well, sites dating to this period of between 450, 550,000 years ago, there hasn't been any sort of logical, uh, straightforward connection as to the exact timeline and how all the tools and all the the primitive technology that they found at these sites, they haven't really fit into a very clear-cut, uh, unified uh, outlook on how these uh, humans migrated, etc., among other um, overall patterns, let's say, of existence and how these uh, uh, cultures kind of integrated and such. This was uh, published at nature.com uh, as a scientific report this comes after three separate excavations that span over 50 years because this site has been excavated a long time ago, back in the 60s. And there were some interesting, they, they found some interesting stuff, but they, but they were left with more questions than before. So year, decades later, they came back and, and uh, excavated the site again. Because of the time frame of this excavation, they're pinning it on Hobel, uh, Homo heidelbergensis, which is usually considered the last common ancestor of Neanderthals and modern humans. Now, all this is up for debate. Um, if you ask Bruce Fenton, if you're familiar with his work, he, th he thinks um, that Homo heidelbergensis shouldn't be its own species. He believes that they're modern humans, period, the end. The, some of the earliest modern humans. Which again, if you uh, have read his work, and if you got if you go back to the inter my interview with him, he d he explains his whole theory, and he lays out his whole theory about how modern humans most likely originated around 780, 800,000 years ago. That seems to be the magic number for him. But anyway, I digress. So, like I said earlier, the Vilki cave was excavated in the 1960s, and then they returned again in 2016. They dug in the initial excavations. They were dated between 11.7 thousand uh, thousand years ago to 40,000 years ago, which is which happens to be the date that uh, Neanderthals went extinct, according to uh, mainstream archaeology. Uh, they dug about four and a half meters deep, and found about were able to distinguish about 15 different layers within those first four and a half uh, meters. However, archeologist Claudio Berto, who was from the University of Warsaw, he thought that there was probably older stuff if they went deeper, mainly because they found animal bones that dated older than 40,000 years ago. So they come back, do another dig in 2016, and they found that the lower layers were distinctly older. They contained species over 500,000 years old. And some of those species that they found were, uh, they're pretty interesting. Um, there was the Mosbach wolf, which is the ancestor to the modern gray wolf, which if you guys are into um, the history of domesticated dogs and wolves and coyotes and, and such, that adds a huge piece to the puzzle. Um, in terms of clearing that up, uh, there was Denninger's bear, Ursus Denningeri, um, the European jaguar. Uh, these were all found in the strata of about 500,000 years or so ago. Another interesting thing that they found was uh, the evidence of flint napping, which is basically the, the like tool making, early tool making using flint fl uh, flakes and cores in which the flint is struck. They also found knives and other tools like hand axes and, and uh, rudimentary uh, like mallets and stuff like that. And these items, they come from the same layer as the bones I mentioned. So according to archaeology, that is pretty much a clear-cut sign of some sort of human activity going on concurrent with the existence of these big animals. Uh, 
Since these items come from the same layer as the bones, it means that their age is very similar. This assumption was confirmed by excavations carried out in the cave in 2018, which were the most recent excavations. They confirmed the arrangement of layers described by researchers half a century ago, 50 years ago. We also discovered uh, more production waste in animal bones. There are only two known sites in Poland with tools around the same t time period, so we've now added so much more to uh, the archaeological record. What's the bar math there? Like 33% increase at least. The two sites were Chabnica, Chabnica, I think that's how you say it, and Rusko. Um, however, at the Tunel Wielki cave, the artifacts are a lot different. Um, this area shows evidence of ancient human habitation, in an open air site so that we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit later one thing they they know about uh f the flint napping was the technique that they used which seemed to be only used on poor quality material or or flint was scarce um, there was another site in italy in which the same technique is used so that's another uh, uh point of uh that's another rabbit hole that they're gonna have to investigate in terms of uh, finding out more about the technique and placing the context in which the people were uh, staying at that site, because they do know that the climate was really harsh in those in that time, and living in a cave would not have been an ideal uh, place to stay because it's damp, it's dank, it's cold. But one thing that they do know is that they found hearths and that these people used fire, which uh, brings me to the. To the next part, uh, Homo heidelbergensis. This this comes from Smithsonian. So human, if you guys want to uh, take a look at this, it's kind of like a snapshot of Homo heidelbergensis. Based on the timeline, if you guys see, they lived about 700, th that should be about 750,000 instead of 700,000 to 200,000 years ago. What they do know is that these people were discovered in 1908. They lived in Europe possibly China and East slash Southern Africa. Um, they know that they controlled fire. They used wooden spears. They hunted large animals. Um, they were the quote, first species to build shelters and dwellings with woods and uh, wood and rock. The story is that they were found in a pit in Heidelberg, Germany. Uh, they found a mandible that they uh, noted upon initial inspection had both erectus homo erectus and modern human uh, traits and that's this is largely part of the reason why uh bruce fenton thinks it's just modern humans because because the mandible is and if you guys don't know a mandible is like a, a piece of the jawbone um was very similar to that of a uh, modern human so much so that he just thinks they were just early modern humans so the next phase of this um of this excavation is going to have to find a second site with the same characteristics that might help archaeologists work out the reason these ancient humans use that specific technique. Uh, um, I'm referring to the technique of uh, uh, flint napping. And if they actually find any bones, that would be a big help as well. I don't know if they'll find bones if because if what they say is true, that it was more of um, like a getaway, like a makeshift shelter. I don't think people were staying there for too long. They were in and out. But then again, people were saying the same thing about Denisova Cave, that they weren't going to find any uh, bones. And they did. They found they found a finger bone. So th they might find something. Um, but what, what do you guys think about this? What do you guys think about specifically it be belonging to Homo heidelbergensis? Do you think it could be just modern humans? Do you think it could just be Neanderthals? I don't want to say clearly if this was... Heidelbergensis just because they live contemporaneous with this place it could be um it could be something else obviously so uh anyway that that's pretty much it for this one um I thought it was very interesting I thought um we're starting to see a, a, a an uptick now of more um older like greater than a hundred thousand years old um discoveries especially in Europe I think this is a pretty big um indicator that people were not just it's not like they were just a ragtag a group of people now i think it's becoming clear that these people had real survival skills they had a real ability to navigate um times in which the climate was unstable or really harsh and they were able to uh use techniques such as creating a fire and finding um 
uh, shelter and just riding it out. And there's no, another thing that I would like to add is there's no indication of war amongst each other or, or anything like that, or like a large scale conflict during these, these ancient times. A lot of the conflict was a lot more recent, so um, it doesn't. There doesn't seem to be any indication that they were being uh, preyed upon or hunted by other humans. So that makes me believe that it was largely a large part of their su- success and survival was due to cooperation. And if you believe these people to be pri- uh, just primeval, primeval, primitive uh, savages then that wouldn't really be the case. So I think there's a lot going on here. I think it, if you read between the lines, these people were likely um, to some degree harmonious with each other to the point to where we're talking about them now. You know, we are the, their uh, descendants. If, if, you, if you are to believe, um, you know, ge- genealogy and, and uh, all that stuff, um, But anyway, let me know what you guys think, and I will talk to you later.